number 179. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
God be with you. And also with you. Please join with me in reading this morning's colic. God of new creation, from the womb of earth you raise the Lord of life. May we receive the word of women who braved the soldier's spears and met him in the dawning light. May we live with morning joy that love will never die through Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life. Amen. Let us now be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 65, beginning with the 17th verse. I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it, or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered a curse. They that shall build houses and inhabit them, they shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit, they shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of all their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, the lion shall eat straw like the ox. But the serpent, its food shall be dust, they shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll pray a portion of Psalm 118 responsively by full verse give thanks to the lord for he is good his mercy endures forever let israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever the lord is my strength and my song he has become my salvation there is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous the right hand of the lord has triumphed the right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will, I will give, give thanks, thanks to you, you for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This, this is, is the Lord's doing, doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from... Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, beginning with the 19th verse. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order. 
Christ the first fruits, and then it is coming to those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Here ends the epistle. Thanks be to God. to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. But Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. She said to her, Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
join with me in prayer. Gracious and most gracious ever-living God, today we give you thanks. Thanks for our lives and the life that you gave us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. May his life continue to live within us as we move each day. And now may the words from my lips and the meditation of all our hearts find favor in your sight, O God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Please be seated. I don't know about you all, but I have been waiting longer than any other Lent to say, and say it with me, Alleluia! It feels good, doesn't it, Thomas? I know. It's been such a long time. Such a terribly long time. Christ is risen, yes. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. That's where we are. That's where we are after two, two plus years of being in captivity, of not being able to come into this, our church home, to celebrate as we are today. We do have the gift now of camera. We do have the gift of live streaming. And there are people out there, and I say hallelujah to you as well, for they have joined us each and every week. We have a larger congregation than we've ever had. What a gift. What a wonderful gift. But this is the precious gift that we are here together today, that we have lived through this pandemic, and no, it's not over. And will it ever be over? I don't know. What I do know is that we carry these things in our lives. Viruses, disease, and plagues are part of our life as much as birth, weddings, birthdays, celebrations, anniversaries, graduations, and those simple gifts of picking a fresh flower in the morning, smelling the herbs from your garden, watching a child walk for the first time, walking past a window, and smelling a fragrance that brings you back as a child of a mother's perfume, or a fragrant smell of a pot of gravy on a kitchen stove. They're all part of our lives. We are here today in joyful triumphant to be here together and to say yes, hallelujah. We have traveled and we have learned but the one thing that has remained the same is our need to continue to be in the community and to help one another. Not to hide in the hills or behind our red doors, but to be out there, to share what we have, to share the love of Christ. Because the love of Christ is not just found in a beautiful story on Christmas, given with gifts, and then for the miracle of resurrection, and yes, an Easter egg hunt. I hope you fill your baskets this morning, guys. It is a life that we treasure as we live our lives. You know, the scripture is full of a lot of things that the men did, right? But this particular gospel that I read this morning talks about who goes to the tomb first. It wasn't one of the male disciples, many of whom did not stand at the foot of the cross as Mary did with Jesus' mother and Jesus' aunt. They stood out in the hills because they were afraid. Yes, they were afraid because they were followers and they knew that they could be crucified too. But the women didn't. And the women went first. 
And who stayed behind the tomb instead of running back to say, oh, he's gone, he's gone out of fear? Mary. Mary who lived closely with Jesus. Many say and many scholars say that she funded his ministry. All I know is that she understood what it was to be part of a leadership because she knew her relationship with her rabbi was more than just a disciple with a teacher, that it was somebody that she had to help and learn from and to share his story, a story of good news and not retribution, a story of unconditional love and not being told that you're bad and whip yourselves. That's not what it's about. It's about the love. The love, the most unconditional love of all, to give up your life to save us all. And then to have a glorious resurrection. Well, guess what? Two years of COVID taught us something. It taught us that we are still a vibrant community, that we are a community that loves our neighbors as ourselves, that we are a community that is committed to helping and to standing tall as leaders. What we have learned is that leadership is not all about Gee, don't I look good today, Father Alexi? You and I are leaders. We can walk down the street and everyone will go, hey, oh, look at the two holy men. No. Leadership is being here and putting bags of groceries in people's cars. Leadership is out working on the street, helping people with gifts of kindness. Leadership is running from one fundraiser to another to help people like Sharon does every single day. Leadership is coming in and helping out fixing things for other people. Leadership is praying for other people. Leadership is coming to run a camera week in and also making sure the mayor behaves. Leadership is helping and working with one another. What we have learned is that it takes true leadership to get through what we've been in, which is known as COVID-19 pandemic. It's the same leadership we've had for over 2,000 years. But it's time to embrace it and to live in who we are. Bishop Hughes reminded the clergy this past Tuesday in her sermon given at our Chrism Mass, which is a time when all the clergy gathers to renew our vows. She told us that our ministry was formed in the womb. And let me tell you something. You should have seen everybody puffing up. Oh, yeah, our ministry was formed in the womb. We're special. And she said, and so was everybody else's ministry. We're the same. It is up to us to live into that ministry completely. If Jesus' life means absolutely anything, it is us leading into our call. Call is not a special word for those who are ordained. Call is a word for every Christian, every person of belief. For in that call, we have the extra ability to share that beautiful gift, that gift of love, God's unconditional love, found for everybody. When Jesus hung on that cross, and the two, one on either side, they were loved as much as Jesus was by God the Creator. I ask you to take this Easter tide, these next few weeks, the great 50 days of Easter, 
I ask you to take that time and I ask you to think about where your call is as a leader in this community, but as a Christian leader within the world. We need to connect them all and live a life that we have been called to live. For in that life, we celebrate resurrection. The resurrection, not just of Jesus Christ, but the resurrection of our lives in a safe new world. Don't forget to say, Hosanna, Jesus Christ reigns today. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Amen. Our post homily hymn is, I'll find it here. 178? That sounds good. Stand if you are able and put your mask on and sing loud. <laughs> Please join with me as Christians have for centuries and let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, <coughs> true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he, he suffered, suffered death, death and was, was buried. buried. On, On the, the third day, day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to join to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
the prayers and petitions of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for those who are sick, those who are suffering from COVID, waiting for test results. We pray for all those in our hearts, from our parish, who are homebound. And we give thanks this day, thanks for this glorious day of resurrection and our wonderful community and all those whom we fed yesterday and the 5,000 plus that we have fed in the last two years. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, Mercifully accept the prayers of your people, the thanksgivings of your people, and strengthen us to do your will. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Now, y'all, this is the time everyone seems to love more than anything else in this church, and every church, other than a good potluck or something like that. But now is the time for us to share God's infinite grace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace, y'all. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. Lynn. You know it's a special day when the deacon's wife comes to church. I mean, I love it. <laughs> the saint. See, around here, the wardens and vestry think that I'm a real rotten person at home. Linda will tell you different, you know. Yeah, and Suzanne up. saw me mop yesterday, so you know what the did you see me mop? You used some water. I, you know, <laughs> before Suzanne gives you any announcements, I want to thank everybody who has helped out the last few weeks, starting with the bishop's visit and coming through and getting this place shaped up for the spring. People have done a lot. I'm not going to start listing names, but I can't thank you enough. And we did it all in the midst of serving people. And yesterday, Linda said she did 94, fam 94 bellies were fed. The great news is when she wrote to me that we have gone over 5,000 people. 5,000 people have, had our, have been fed. And every box, every can, Every carton of milk, cookies, everything was donated. People care. Thank you, St. Clements, for spreading the good news. And thank you, Hawthorne, and every other community that has helped us with Martha's Pantry. I think that's something we should all say hallelujah about. So let's say it. Hallelujah! Suzanne. Tell them. I won't give the bad news. You give the bad news. <laughs> uh, we, we, there is no festive coffee hour today, but there is an egg hunt. So uh, we, we decided, uh, the board decided that uh, people were anxious to get home and uh, had preparations to do, so we didn't want to have more cleanup. But thank you to everyone who's made Holy Week um, come and clean and set up flowers or strip the altar or all those things that it's a lot to look back upon, starting with the triumphal entrance last week outside 
blessing of the palms coming in and, and doing our, our thing. And then Tenebrae last Sunday night. Father Alexi joining us on Thursday to commemorate the Last Supper and to do the stripping and, uh, of the altar. That was all. And then Good Friday, we had a few people here for quiet, solemn colics. Yesterday for prayers and then today for this beautiful service. Today is the first day we're bringing back the chalice. Wine will be available at the communion rail, but there's no rail. You're going to come and get it here. No one's going to kneel around each other. We're going to go one side first, so we're going to do this side first. And I ask when you come up to go for communion, come up from here and go back down this aisle. When they are completely seated, this side will do the same thing. Come up and go back. That way, when you go back into your pew, no one's blocking you from getting into your pew. There'll be a chalice that you can sip from. I'll be holding that, cleaning it thoroughly after each person and moving it. There's going to be a very small chalice if you want to intent. Please, if you intent, just dip it lightly. Do not let your finger get into the chalice. I used a small chalice so you can't. You could, it's amazing how some people think if they don't swish it around and dump it up and down, they're not going to get the blood of Christ. It's a symbol. You don't have to take either. You can take one. And if all you want is a blessing, come forward with your arms crossed. For us, remember, we've had two years of communion as a community. And that's the communion that we celebrate. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Come into his courts with praise and thanksgiving. You. and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give God thanks and praise it is truly right to glorify you father and to give you thanks for you alone our God living and true 
dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness. You made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. But chiefly I be bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is a true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he, was, he has won for us everlasting life. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your might works, mighty work reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, you might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy you came to help, so that in seeking you we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill our your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And then we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died for us and rose, rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift, gift for those who believe, to complete the, his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own, who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At the supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, waiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gift you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, you, we give give thanks thanks to you, you, and and we we pray pray to you, Lord Lord our God. God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be the holy gift for your people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your holy, one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ, reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Justin, Michael, Carly, and all who minister in your church, Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember the people of Ukraine and Ethiopia. Remember all who have died in peace of Christ and whose, those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and life. And grant that we may find our inheritance with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, Miss Clement and all the saints have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Uh, one child's prayer is going to come up now. The we'll, body we'll of Christ. How much do you want to give to? Um, come on up. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ. The God, Heavenly Father, 
You have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food, the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. And grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia! Christ has risen! The Lord, the Lord is, is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia! May God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you all who believe the gates of everlasting life. May God the Father, Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a, victor a victorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. May God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. I'll clean it. I'll bring it to the dry cleaner. You have to pick up the rest. I say this in part for our brother Don, who, when I first used the word clementine, wasn't too sure if he wanted to be remembered as a fruit. But all of you, you're clementines in my heart. So my brother and sister clementines, let us go forth in the world, rejoicing and proclaiming the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Now, for everybody who is a child at heart, which we all are, the Easter bunny may have come 
and there could be some things outside, and you have a few minutes until he, you can go out there. So I ask you to listen to whatever Christian has to play, and then exit stage left. 